Would you like to know more about the basics of just quilt making and specifically how to make a beautiful quilt out of recycled t-shirts? Then you're going to love this video. Hi, my name is Julie Hansen and I want to welcome you to a beginning quilt class. First of all, quilts are so much fun and entertaining and create memories for forever if they're done right. To be done right, you need to have the right equipment. Let's talk about that. I'm going to start over here and let you know that you're going to need an ironing board. In fact, I iron a lot through the project and of course an iron and I keep a cheesecloth type cloth in a bowl of water near my ironing board because sometimes you'll want to make a, a very, very sharp crease and you can do that with, with the cheesecloth. Another thing that I found really handy is this roller that takes lint and small fabrics off. Your, your fabric is going to have a lot of little uh, ravelings and that will help you clean up. You'll need a seam gauge. Normally it will be set on one quarter inch because all of the seams in your quilt are going to be a quarter inch. I like to have a little container to put little threads and you know little things that uh, I've discarded and instead of having to go to the trash can I have my little my little container that I can empty whenever I whenever it's convenient. A pair of scissors or two sometimes I like to have two pairs so that on my table I have the ability to go not have to go back and forth and find scissors. Pencil and piece of paper um, I like to keep notes uh, sometimes I'll make a note as to where I last stopped on the project to remind myself where to start again. Those are pretty general tools. I'm going to start now talking a little bit more specifically about tools that I've used for quilts. Now one of the most vital pieces of equipment that you will need is something that measures accurately and that you can cut on. And this particular board, they come in multiple sizes, but for my project this one was the most effective. Along with that you're going to need a nice cutting tool. Be careful because these are really sharp and they usually have a safety on them that you'll want to put on when you're not using it. Also you'll need some additional blades so that you always have a sharpened cutter. To cut fabric you'll also need this a piece of plexiglass with, uh, with the measurements on it. I found that if I put a piece of tape here, it was easier for me to see the edge and to use it as a cutting. For example, if your fabric's down there and you're cutting across here, this helped me have a really good start. Of course, you're going to need thread. That kind of goes without saying. Try to get, uh, if you're working with a variety of colors, I actually found kind of a neutral color that blended with all of the fabrics that I was using. This was a real handy tool, this steam -a seam and I'll demonstrate later exactly how I use that. Now it may seem funny, but I like to use some duct tape and masking tape. Uh, sometimes I'll uh, use the stripes on the ironing board cover to line something up and then I'll tack it down with a piece of duct tape, something very temporary. Don't iron it though because it doesn't do well with heat. Something else that I like to use is uh, this temporary spray adhesive. Sometimes when you're putting some things together and you just need them to be stable for until you can stitch them, this stuff is pretty handy. Now the sewing machine. You don't really need anything real big and fancy, but I do like the machine that I have because it has some things that are specific to quilting. For example, do you see the extended table that it has? That really makes it helpful for quilts that tend to get larger and larger as you go. I also have handy the screwdriver that comes with the, uh, with the sewing machine so that I can make uh, switches of different feet because two of the most important uh, feet that you can use for, for your project is one called a quilting foot which has a automatic quarter inch measurement for you which is awesome. And then later when your piece gets really bulky and you're sewing through several layers of fabric, you'll need a walking foot. Looks really maniacal, but it's actually very handy. And the screwdriver, of course, to, to get between them. Now one thing I have to pull out every once in a while so I keep it handy is the manual to my sewing machine so that if I'm unsure of something I'm doing, I can, I can look it up. 
Maybe it's because I'm older or whatever, but I really uh, like to set my, my working surface up so that I can see well. And to do that, I, I like to have the magnifying glass and then additional lighting. I find it tremendously helpful. So there you have all of the tools that I found very basic to beginning your project. Once you have those, what's next? The next step is deciding what you're going to make and maybe that's the most fun part. I've chosen to make this t-shirt memory quilt and I'm really excited about it because my sister asked for one for her 50th birthday present and I figured how special is that. So this particular pattern is the one that we'll discuss throughout but you're gonna have to you know decide what pattern you're gonna do and follow that one. This I recommend that once you get your pattern, look it over thoroughly. Don't just start on item one. Read every page thoroughly. And I, I kind of mark mine up a little bit with some of the, my notes. Um, and I do it in pencil in case I want to use the pattern again. And t-shirt quilts are very unique because there's different patterns and sizes and t-shirts. So the first thing that I needed to do as far as materials to make the quilt is my sister had to send me t-shirts. So she sent me several t-shirts and there's going to be at least 15 t-shirts that make up the 12 squares because you have some that are full squares and then you have some that a couple of the mo designs make up the square. So she sent me mostly t-shirts of that belong to my nephew. So I went through the t-shirts and picking the proper one takes some time because you need to have the right shape by the pattern and you need to basically ask too which are the most meaningful to the person you're making it for. Another thing that I found handy was I, I found this older uh, portfolio thing that is very stable that I could put some of my prepared fabrics in. When you make a t-shirt quilt, you have to stabilize the t-shirt material with a backing and so this kind of helped me keep it neat. The next thing I did was I picked out a t-shirt that frankly I didn't care that much about because I wanted to practice and so I took I took one of the one of the t-shirts, I cut it, which is a real scary part when you're making a t-shirt quilt because you can make a mistake and, and kind of not be able to use the piece, but but you want to be really careful in, in cutting the design, finding the, the middle of the design, which you can do by, by folding it into quarters, finding the center of it, and measuring out from the center to the proper proportions for the pattern. And then fabrics, oh my goodness, uh, depending on your pattern, uh, this particular pattern called for 30 different types of pa uh, fabrics. And so I went with a variety of colors with the main one being blues and yellows because those are the favorite colors of my sister and my nephew. Here's the interfacing that I used for the back of the t-shirts. I used white when the t-shirt when the was lighter and I used a dark when the color of the t-shirt was a darker color. Now, the other thing that you're gonna need eventually is depending on how you back your quilt, after you get the quilt done, in between the back and the front goes a layer of batting. And that's what this is. And then I chose this backing, which is a fleece. 